Hi, it's Dwyer, February 3rd, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about the man behind me. I believe he is the real deal. I believe this is one of the future faces of boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just point out that you have different levels of prospects. You have some prospects who look like they have great offensive games, but you understand they need to work on defense. You understand the guy needs to take some time developing the fundamentals and needs to, quite frankly, fight a few times before he enters into the ring against elite fighters. Right? Let me just openly say, I do not believe personally that Ryan Garcia is ready for Devin Haney. Right? I don't believe Ryan Garcia is ready for Teofimo Lopez. I do believe Ryan Garcia has a certain charisma, has a great left hook, has length, has hand speed, has a great uppercut. People shouldn't sleep on the uppercut. I believe in time, Ryan Garcia could get substantially better, could actually deliver on the process. I think personality-wise, uh, he is one of boxing's more riveting people. But understand, Ryan Garcia is different than Hamza Shiraz, the man behind me. Right? Shiraz is 6'3", he's 24 years old, he is a middleweight. His next fight is against Liam Williams. This is one of boxing's better secrets. I know they know about him in the United Kingdom. Folks, he is relatively unknown here in the United States. Right now, what I'm going to say is just my opinion. It's not public opinion. Right? I'm going to praise a guy and name some big names that I think he beats today. This is not a Ryan Garcia situation. Right? I, I don't, you know, I'm not saying, wow, if this guy works hard, he'll improve to get to a level where he could do some things. No, no. This guy is ready right now, right? Boxing, simply put, is a young man's game. We hold on to the guys who have delivered for us, even when they're a little past their prime, right? We'll believe in an Ali, even when an Ali is about to fight a Larry Holmes, Right? We, today, are believing in a lot of guys who are over 30, who are sure first ballot Hall of Famers, who might not be able to beat some of the young lions in the forest right now. Now, let me just say, Hamza Shiraz has one of boxing's best jabs. Right? You don't need for me to say that. Just look at the films yourself. Right? Understand, boxing is one of those sports where you don't have to listen to the pundits. Just be aware of the argument and then go take a look for yourself. I have some videos in my favorites folder of this fighter. Understand, he couples one of boxing's best jabs with one of boxing's best straight right hands. And he has the gift of height, right? He's not going to be 160 pounds at 6'3 for too much longer, right? But understand, when he fights opponents like Thomas the Hitman Hearns, the opponent sees how tall he is and thinks, oh, let me just slip the jab, get inside, work on this guy's body. And then you find out slipping the jab's a problem. Then you find out you have things to worry about as you're trying to slip the jab. That straight right hand will knock you 
out. Understand, Shiraz has a long streak of stoppages. This guy is a closer. Now my concern, and this is what happens when you're dealing with young fighters who have been invincible, right? Who are on their way up. Shiraz is unbeaten. He's on his way up and he's just knocking out guys and life is fun. The sport is easy. My concern is that he is too front foot heavy, right? He's been so dominant that he hasn't been challenged enough to understand that he needs to be at times on his back foot, right? If for no other reason than to be less predictable to his opponent, right? Realistically, I believe every veteran in the sport who's a little bit older than Shiraz understands whatever the provado, whatever the testosterone, there are going to be times in a fight when you get hit, dazed, you need to regroup, you need to take portions of rounds off, or at least outside of the pocket. Right now, while Shiraz has been knocked down, I'm not sure if he's faced that level of adversity. Let's just say, I think there's a learning curve here that he's going to have to live through. Right? This is the young guy who has been dominant. It's like Mike Tyson. Right? Mike Tyson just didn't know that having a corner that didn't have an end swell wasn't the way to go about life. Because Tyson had never had his face blown up. Right? Tyson did not know that if you hit the canvas and the ref is counting, don't waste precious seconds trying to find your mouthpiece on the canvas before you get up, which is what he did when he lost to Buster Douglas. I get the feeling Hamza Shiraz is kind of like a young Mike Tyson. Everything is so easy right now. You almost hope he's in a fight where he gets roughed up a little bit. Not that he loses, but that he gets roughed up enough where he understands, hey, I need to work on some things. I need to develop some strategies for when I get hurt. I can't assume that I'm Superman. He got knocked down, by the way, by a fighter named Francisco Torres. Right? Perhaps there are questions about his chin. It's unclear right now. Again, this is a 24-year-old. Now, let me just say, too, Shiraz is still working on his fluidity. In other words, he has the perfect jab, but he's a little bit robotic. Now, why that matters is that 160 pounds, you have a guy. Arislandi Lara. I don't care what the age is on the birth certificate. Lara is fluid. Some of us, let me raise my hand, believe that Lara may have beaten Canelo back in the day, right? Lara is that mover guy who can go left or right, right? There are fighters out there like Lara who could make your lack of fluidity a problem. Let's break from the crowd right here. I rank Shiraz higher than I do Jamal Charlo. I know Charlo came back. I know Charlo looked good. I also know Charlo's in his 30s. I also know Charlo hasn't fought that often of late. I also will rate Shiraz ahead of Arislandi Lara. Lara's an older fighter. Right? Lara has been roughed up in some fights. Lara, let's just say would have a problem getting inside on Shiraz. I will say this. Lara has a mobile jab. Shiraz is, is more stationary. So there are certain things that Lara would have in his favor. But I would take Shiraz over him. 
Let me just say a fight between Shiraz and Chris Eubank. And I disagree with most of my viewers on Chris Eubank. I think Eubank is very advanced and is very tricky. Right? Eubank is one of the people I immediately think of when I think of a KG vet. I think a fight between Shiraz and Eubank, and understand, Eubank at this stage, let's just call him out, doesn't want to fight the best. It's prize fighting. Eubank wants the money. Right? Eubank has, you know, been a champion. Eubank is at the stage in his career. Older fighters get there where he's decided, hey, I only have a few fights left. I might as well get paid for them, <clears throat> right? So, you know, a Eubank-Shiraz fight, let's just say you're going to have to offer Eubank a hell of a lot of money, and even then, I'm not sure he takes it. But understand, that would be a jump ball, simply because Eubank <clears throat> knows how to fight different styles. He trained for a while with Roy Jones. He can actually imitate Roy Jones' style. Right? Eubank is front foot. Eubank is back foot. Eubank, although he's reckless at times, right? When he gets caught by Liam Smith, where are his hands? Right? They're down by his side. Although he gets reckless at times, he understands defense. Right? I believe a Shiraz Eubank fights a jump ball. The only middle way I rank above Shiraz is Janabek. Right? Understand, I believe Janabek is one of the baddest men in boxing. Right? Frankly, if they announced a fight between Canelo, who fights at 168, and Shiraz, without even knowing the odds, I know Shiraz would be the betting side of the play. Right? He's big. He wouldn't have to get too close to Canelo. Look at how Thomas the Hitman Hearns destroyed Roberto Duran in the 1980s. I believe that's how the fight would play out. Right? Let me just say, Shiraz would probably be a big underdog against Canelo. Right? In my eyes, that'd be more bare for us. I'm not saying Canelo's an easy matchup for Shiraz. I'm just saying, when you spot talent like this, you need to just picture what the odds would be. Since most Americans don't know this fighter, just picture what the odds would be. And just know, okay, if this fight is announced, have your own number. Say, if this fight's announced, and if some casino is crazy enough to make Shiraz a greater than plus 150 underdog, I don't care what the rest of the world has to say. I'm going to be one of the first in line, whether it's at a physical casino or whether it's at an online legal sports book. Right? Just understand we're dealing with that kind of level of talent. He has the gift of youth. It's only when you're young that you could be 6'3 and 160 pounds. Understand, I mentioned Thomas the Hitman Hearns. He actually went all the way up to light heavyweight. Right? You have to look at Shiraz and you have to ask tough questions. I don't believe David Benavides will be able to stay at 168 too much longer. Just looking at him. Right? I believe eventually he's going to have to go up to 175. Insiders know that he sparred in the past with Dimitri Bevel. Right? Understand, if Bevel beats Peterbiev, the obvious guy for Bevel to fight would be David Benavides. Understand, too, Bevel beat another of his sparring partners in a recent match, Gilberto Ramirez, who now is a mandatory at cruiserweight. Right? So I'm expecting Benavides to leave the uh, division. I don't think. One man's opinion, I could be wrong, I hope I'm wrong. I don't think Canelo fights Benavides. Right? I think Canelo has figured out he's a little bit older. 
I think Canelo realizes that Benavides is a master in the pocket and is physically bigger than him. I think Canelo has also figured out that fans really can't tell the difference between Benavides and opponents Canelo would have an easier time against. Right? Canelo could fight Jamal Charlo. Have the whole brother angle, right? You beat my brother who's at 154. Now come fight me. And I think people would look at that as Canelo against an unbeaten fighter, not realizing that Benavides would probably mop the floor, in my opinion, with Jamal Charlo, right? Let me also say too, and I say this from time to time in these videos, this is not a fan club site. I'm not trying to be anybody's best friend, right? I'm, I'm just trying to get an edge on the casino, right? I think Benavides would give Canelo all he could handle. I think Benavides just flatly beats the rest of the PBC stable in the weight range, right? There is a fighter who would give Benavides big problems, and that's David Morrell. Right? That's the fighter at 168 that Shiraz has to think about the most because I believe he's going to be at 168. But fortunately for Shiraz, while people know who David Morrell is, nobody in the United States knows who Shiraz is. Right, So Shiraz can take his time and can pick up other paydays. Right, Liam Williams has fought some of the best. He fought Eubank, who I'm bullish on. He fought Demetrius Andre, who I'm very bullish on, right? He's only been stopped once, and that's by Liam Smith in 2017, although Eubank did knock him down four times. By the way, you need to look at that, Phil, because Williams is a crafty vet. Eubank is able to drop his hands in that fight. Right? When Eubank is on an offensive roll and he's able to drop his hands, folks, you as an opponent is in a lot of trouble. Now, Williams is an older fighter, so he's not 6'3", 160 pounds. No, he's 5'10", 160. I don't see how he's going to be able to deal with Shiraz's size and jab. Right? Shiraz is a lot like Larry Holmes. The fight doesn't start until you can find a way to do something with Shiraz's jab. Right? Understand, if you can't get by Shiraz's jab, folks, the fight's over. I don't care if it's the second round, the third round, the fight's over. The difference between him and Larry is Larry danced. Larry had a mobile jab. Right? Larry's jab was better than Shiraz's jab. Right? Larry danced. Larry was fluid. Right? But understand, Larry was content just jabbing you to death for 15, then 12 rounds. They, they changed the number of rounds in fights. Shiraz isn't content. This is the guy who figures out that you can't get by his jab. Then he decides to end the fight. Right? As I said, this is a closer. Right? This is one of those young guys who doesn't want to work full time. Doesn't want to go the distance. Right? He wants to leave the fight early and usually does. So, let me just say, remember this name. Right, folks? He is one of the best. Again, I'm not talking about the future. This isn't a Ryan Garcia situation where I'm saying, wow, you know, so Ryan is learning defense. Ryan is learning a shoulder roll. In time, if he picks up his defense, he might be able to hang with Devin Haney. No, this isn't that situation. Now, this is a situation where I'm just flatly telling you if this guy signed to fight Canelo, 
I'd be looking to put money on him, right? The challenge for him would be keeping Canelo, who can fight low, away from his midsection, right? Let's just say it would be an excellent fight. I'd hedge the play with Canelo by stoppage, just food for thought. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I like Shiraz over Liam Williams. Understand, Williams is hard to stop. I think Shiraz still has a pretty good shot at a knockout. I would sprinkle money on Shiraz simply to win, as well as Shiraz by stoppage. Right, folks? This is a closer. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Remember the name. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.